Thank you, Matt and worship team. Well, I'm excited tonight. I'm excited to share with you a little bit about uh, what our church is, is doing and how we are partnered uh, with, with people all around the world and the teams that we are going to be sending out this summer starting in just a couple days. And then hearing firsthand about what God is doing in South Africa. We, uh, we serve an amazing God who can be at work all around the globe at the same time. And so it's exciting to, to hear what he is doing, not just here in our community, in our country, but across the continents. So before we do that, let's, uh, let's open with the word of prayer tonight. Father, we're so very grateful uh, that you allow us to be your ambassadors, your representatives, that you entrust us with the message of reconciliation as if you are making your appeal through us. God, I pray that as we, as we seek to carry out the Great Commission uh, here in our own neighborhood and across the nations, that you would help us to just catch glimpses of how you are at work and how you are changing lives and how you are drawing people to yourself. We thank you for the people who are striving and, and working and toiling day after day for the cause of the gospel. We thank you, God, for the work that you are doing in South Africa. We thank you for the people who are coming to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior and for uh, the partners that we have there that uh, we've come alongside for many years now, uh, just trying to be an encouragement and a help to the work that you are doing there. We pray, God, that as we uh, hear about uh, this work, as we hear about the progress that's being made, the challenges that, uh, that they face, that you would help us just to, to remember uh, those who are working in other parts of the world who are sharing Christ in some very difficult places and that you'd help us to pray for them and to lift them up before you. We pray, God, tonight that uh, the technology would function properly, uh, that you would help us to hear and understand, and, God, that ultimately uh, you would help us to be refreshed and uh, excited about the work that you are doing. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Before, uh, before we talk a little bit about South Africa and uh, bring up Pastor Cole Seely in order to, uh, to have a little bit of an interview conversation with him, I just want to share with you briefly about our short-term mission trips that we have going this summer, hopefully so that you can be in prayer for these teams as they go. Our first team is actually leaving in just a couple days, this Friday, uh, to head to Alaska uh, to, to work at Tenalian Bible Camp. Uh, up in Port Allsworth, Alaska, which is really an, an amazing ministry. Uh, this is a, a camp where they, each summer, week after week, bring in many children from the, from the surrounding areas, communities. It's, it's fly-in only, so think about the logistics behind that, flying in all the counselors and support staff that's needed each week, as well as all the kids who are going to be there for a week of camp. Uh, many of these kids come from remote areas or villages where there's no church or gospel witness, and so this is an opportunity, an amazing opportunity uh, for them to, uh, to have a great week with these kids, but ultimately share the gospel with them. And so we have a team of seven that's going to be leaving uh, Friday. They're going to be uh, assisting as, as counselors and, and, and really hopefully building into the lives of these children and, and sharing Christ with them. And so uh, be in prayer for them as they, as they travel, as they go, and, and that God would be preparing hearts even, even today uh, of these children to, to hear the gospel uh, just a, a couple weeks from now, on July 6th, we have a team leaving for uh, Slovakia and then Romania, where they'll be conducting uh, VBS-style uh, children's camps in both countries uh, a week in each place. Uh, they'll take some of the curriculum that, that will be happening here next week at our VBS. Uh, they'll adapt it a little bit and, uh, and then uh, be able to use that and, and share Christ through it in those two countries. Uh, Hayward Paul is going to be leading that team, and uh, they have uh, the largest team, I'm told, that they're ever taking to these countries. So that's, uh, that's exciting. That's a blessing. Uh, and uh, we pray that that's going to be just a fruitful trip and that uh, many kids and, and even, uh, even young teenagers will be able to, uh, to hear the gospel and come to Christ. Uh, and then just a few days after that, on July 9th, we're sending a, a team to Camp Grace, which is uh, just outside of Macon, Georgia, so not too far from here. Uh, Camp Grace is really an amazing place where they, um, 
They sponsor kids from uh, many of them from from urban areas like the Atlanta area, but we're also sending, uh, Lord willing, about 100 kids from this area right down here in the Low Country to go to uh, to spend a week of camp up there at uh, at Camp Grace, and again with the purpose of uh, really showing the love of Christ and sharing uh, the gospel of Christ to these children. It's uh, it's really a neat place. I've had the opportunity to go there a few times, and uh, they. They have a heart for these children and, and a very clear mission uh, to share Christ with them. We have actually uh, four of our young adults that are working all summer there at Camp Grace as, as counselors, as support staff, photographer, videographer, all these kinds of things. And, and then our mission team will head there uh, from July 9th to the 15th. And then July 13th, uh, our final mission team this summer will be headed to South Africa. Uh, we have a team of nine people this year who's going to be headed to uh, uh, the Eastern Cape, which is the southeastern part of South Africa. Uh, we're going to uh, be based out of Whittlesea, which we'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit about in just a moment. Uh, it's, uh, it's winter there. It's uh, school uh, during the school term, and so we'll, we'll be doing some after-school camps uh, Monday through Friday uh, in, uh, in Whittlesea, and, and uh, oftentimes in the past we've had uh, 150, 200 kids, children who will show up for these camps, and, and we're able to uh, just to love on them and, and ultimately uh, share the gospel with them. Uh, we also have an invitation to come into the schools, which is really an amazing thing, and uh, share there and, and uh, ho- help hand out some shoes. Uh, we call it the Footprints Program, school uniform shoes for children who need them or don't have them, or uh, theirs are, were worn out a couple years ago, uh, but that also is an open door for us to share the gospel in the schools, which is really an amazing door that God has opened for us. Um, and so, if you would, just uh, remember these trips, uh, some as close as just a couple hours away, and then some uh, which take uh, 24 plus hours of travel uh, to get there. The uh, the flight to South Africa is about a 16-hour flight, and that's one of four flights. Um, so, you know, just be in prayer for our teams as, as they travel, as they go, that God would strengthen each and every person, that we would be um, available to him, to God, and flexible for, for him to use us however he desires, and that he would be working in hearts and drawing people to himself in the way that only he can. Um, so Alaska, Romania, Slovakia, Camp Gray, South Africa— uh, lots of people from this church heading all over the world to, uh, to hopefully be used by God. And so it's an exciting thing, and um, I know that each and every one would appreciate uh, your prayers. At the end of the service tonight, we'll actually be praying for, for each one of these trips. Um, but again, uh, the more people we have in the church praying, uh, the better as well. And so South Africa, our focus tonight is uh, the country of, of South Africa. Uh, like I said, specifically the Eastern Cape. Uh, Whittlesea is where Pastor Cole is, is, uh lives and based out of where the church is. And so I just wanted, before we, uh, before we talk to him, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background information, a little bit of uh, context about what our partnership has been like and the fruitfulness that's come out of uh, the almost now 20-year partnership we've had uh, in, uh, in, with this uh, ministry in this part of the world and, and uh, in, in the surrounding villages of, of Whittlesea. And so uh, the church that Pastor Cole Asili, uh pastors is called Heiwu Fellowship. Uh, it's in uh, what's called Extension 4. Extension 4 is uh, a neighborhood, if you will, of Whittlesea. Uh, it's called Extension 4 because it's a, it's a government-built uh, and uh, neighborhood. Uh, they, the unemployment rates are really high. In this, in this part of the world. And so uh, this, is, uh, this is a place where the government has come in and, and built houses and, and, and allowed people to come and stay in these houses. There, I don't know exactly how many. There's about 300 plus. This is a picture, as you can see here, from, from just above. There's, there's a little mountain behind it. And so uh, most years we, we climb that mountain. And uh, this doesn't capture all of it. It, it stretches a little bit more to the, to the right, and the, there's a corner over here to the left, but right in the center there, I don't know if you can see, um, well, actually, it's a little bit to the right, but there's a brick, long brick building. Uh, that's actually the church. Uh, it's right across the street from a school, which is those, those green uh, buildings with the green roof there. Um, and so as you can see, the church is literally in the middle of the neighborhood, uh, which is really an amazing thing, and it's, it's uh, perfectly located uh, for the for the, you know, thousands of people who ultimately who, who just live right here in this neighborhood. Uh, and so that's Extension 4, and that's where the church is. We, uh, as a church, uh, helped 
uh, them build that building right there. There's, this, there's a picture here from a few years ago. This is the, uh, the building process of the church. I was able to, uh, to see that kind of come along year by year. Uh, the first years that, we, that I took teams there, we, we met in a tent. Uh, we were able to, the church had a piece of property right there uh, in Extension 4, and they put up a tent. We would do our camps uh, in, a, in the tent with the dirt floor, and uh, sometimes hundreds of kids trying to fit into this tent and sing the songs and hear the Bible lessons. And, uh, and then uh, through uh, just some of the support of, of some of you, some of the people in this church, uh, we were able to, to help uh, fund the construction of this church building, uh, which has now been completed for a few years, and we've been able to do the camps inside this church. And God has been blessing. God has been working. God has been building this church, uh, not just obviously the physical building, but bringing the people. Uh, here's just a picture of a, of a baptism service that they had uh, in, a, in a pool. <laughs> They'll have a baptismal, so it's a, they put up a, a pool right outside the building, and uh, some, some of the young and older people uh, on that day were able to be baptized and declare uh, their faith in Jesus Christ, which, uh, which sometimes comes with some persecution and rejection in this part of the world. Uh, there's people who oftentimes will be um, basically excommunicated from their families uh, for, for, for following Jesus Christ. And uh, the family is very important. It's the support system uh, really over there. And so it's a, it's a big step of faith oftentimes for them uh, to, to come to Christ and then to declare that publicly through baptism. Um, here's a, a picture of uh, Colosili just giving someone in the, in the neighborhood of one of the, our red booklets, uh, Would You Like to Know God as Your Friend, in the Hosa language. Uh, it's been translated into that language, and so they, uh, they get those. They, they hand them out. It's, again, it's just, if you know the booklet, it's, it's the gospel. And so uh, uh, they're able to, uh, to welcome people onto the church property as well as go into the neighborhood, uh, give out uh, these gospel booklets, and, and, um, and God is working through that. Uh, here's a, a picture of... Uh, some young ladies, uh, this was actually our last year when we came, and they, uh, they came and wanted to be a part of the camp, and they were all able to receive Bibles as part of that, and so they were, uh, they were excited about being able to have their, their very own uh, copy of the Word of God. And, and so again, God is working, God is uh, growing the church. Just in the past year, they've had a couple of exciting things that have happened. Uh, they, they were able uh, to dig a well. This is a you know, we take running water for granted here, uh, water in general, I think. Uh, but a lot of the people in Extension 4, one of the things they spend a good part of their day doing is just finding water for the day, um, for what they need water for, which, you know, again, is a whole lot of things when you think about it. Uh, and so oftentimes you will see people with jugs of water walking around. There's a, there's a truck that sometimes goes around and a uh, tank truck that has water in it and fill, will fill up people's jugs. And uh, there's a reservoir, but it's a ways, it's a walk. And so that, you know, being able to have a, a well at the church is, is not just providing for the church, but also another thing that will bring people to it. Uh, and so we have a short video here of uh, kind of, they had to go down a little bit further for this well, but kind of the moment where they, uh, they struck water, which is right on the church property, which is kind of neat. So pretty neat, and this is opening up uh, all kinds of other opportunities, as we'll see in just a minute, um, to, uh, to, to grow vegetables there on the church grounds and, and, uh, and be a blessing in, in the neighborhood in that way as well. Uh, they were also able to help, uh, we were also through the, some of the partnership of our church, not only the well, but some solar panels uh, to help provide power there at the church. Uh, this is you know, as, many par as in many parts of the world, again, another thing we take for granted, electricity, right? Uh, they, they have it 
for the most part, in, in most parts of South Africa, um, but even just last year when our team was there, there was uh, more demand than they had power, and so each evening there were, uh, there were blackout times uh, when there was no electricity, and so everything would, uh, would just turn off. Uh, some, some people, very few people, had a generator, but most people did not, and so you, uh, you, know, you get your lanterns ready, try to get everything done you need done as far as electricity is concerned before, uh, before the, uh, the blackout comes and, and, uh, and, and then hopefully it's, uh, it's on schedule and power comes back on at some point during the night. Uh, but this is hopefully going to help the church have a little bit uh, more constant uh, power through these, through these solar panels. It is, it is sunny quite a bit of the time there and so uh, that's a blessing as well. Here's uh, just the beginnings of a vegetable garden that they've been able to uh, to plant and, and kind of maintain. That's, that's actually uh, right beside the, uh, the Sunday school building there on the church grounds. And uh, so the, the well has been uh, giving them the ability to be able to grow some of these. And uh, the, one of the things they do as an outreach, as a ministry uh, that, that we've been able to participate with with our teams is um, speed some of the people in the neighborhood. Uh, make a stew and, and some bread, and oftentimes the, the younger people, the children, will come in with their own plate or little Tupperware, and, and, uh, and they'll, they'll receive uh, a meal. And, and that's a way to, to get them to the church, on the church grounds, and invite them to Sunday service, or have a conversation with them as they're there. And, uh, and so this is going to hopefully be able to, uh, to supplement that as, they, as they're able to, to grow some of their own uh, vegetables and produce. Uh, one of the other things the church has been doing, which Pastor Cole Celia will share with us in just a little minute, in just a few minutes, is not just uh, focus on the ministry in, in Whittlesea, but reach out to the surrounding villages. Uh, Whittlesea is one of the larger towns, uh, not by our standards, but by this area's standards. Uh, and so most of the villages around are, are smaller, but uh, also um, lack some of the, some of the, you know, very common things that, that, that we have, like paved roads and running water and uh, toilets that flush and these kinds of things that, you know, we don't, we don't uh, really even know that, that we enjoy on a regular basis. Uh, one, of the, one of these exciting villages that we've been able to, uh, uh, to go to with our team last year, that they have a, a church plant that's, uh, that's growing, that's been really... Uh, See, they've really seen God move in this, in this village. It's a village called Who Can Tell, uh, which is a fun, funny and interesting name. Uh, but it's about 15, 20 minutes down the road. And uh, for the very first time last year, we were able to do our camps there. This is a picture of uh, children showing off their, uh, uh, their wordless book bracelets, uh, their gospel bracelets, if you will, as they did the craft. And we're, we were able to share the, the gospel with them. Uh, last year, we did it in a, kind of a community building. And so we were able to, to rent that for the week and do camp there. Uh, but the, the desire was, as the, the, the house church, where they've been having church there on Sunday mornings, uh, is overflowing, was for them to, to be able to uh, purchase a piece of land. We, as we were there last year with, uh, with Pastor Cola Seely and George, who's uh, kind of helping lead that, uh, that church plant, we, uh, we prayed for that. We prayed over uh, the town. We prayed over s- some land and prayed that God would... Uh, would be able to, uh, to provide that so that they could have uh, hopefully a, a, bu- a church building built on it in the not too distant future. Uh, and the exciting thing is, is that, that God has provided that. God, they were able to secure a piece of land uh, to start construction on a, on a church building. I asked Pastor Colosili just a few days ago, when we go there next, next month, will we be able to have camp there? Uh, and he was, uh, he was hopeful. <laughs> Uh, as they're just starting to put the bricks up, just starting to put the walls up. He said, we, could, we may have walls, but no roof. And, and I said, well, we don't need a roof to do camp. <laughs> uh, it's winter. It's pretty dry in the winter there. Uh, not much rain. And so, uh, so I'm excited about the, uh, just the possibility of, of maybe being able to, uh, uh, to have our camps in this, in this brand new, most likely unfinished uh, church building for the very first time, and, and have the people of that community, of that village, come and know that this is, you know, this is the, this is the church, uh, and, and hear about Jesus there. Uh, last year, I was able to, uh, to preach at the, at the house church, uh, where they've been meeting, where they're still meeting, ultimately, until this, uh, this new building is completed, and that our church is, again, also uh, partnering to help build. And, and so I just want to share with you uh, one last video. This is, uh, those of you who 
saw our report back last year, you've seen this, but this is uh, after I preached, I walked outside because there was nowhere for me to sit. Um, they had, uh, all the chairs were, were full. They had opened the door to the bedroom. People were sitting on the bed in the bedroom listening to the church service. Uh, and so I walked outside because that was uh, the only place for me to go, really, ultimately. And, uh, and they, they, they sang some worship songs, and I took a little video. And so you don't see the inside uh, but just the outside, there was a sheep and a baby sheep just kind of grazing right next to the house, and, uh, and, and you'll hear that. So here's a, here's a video of the house church, and who can tell? So as you can see, just very basic, but standing room only, uh, <laughs> if you want to be a part of Sunday morning service there. And so it was just, it was a privilege to be able to, uh, to be there, to see that, and, and excited that, that the Whittlesea Church is looking uh, for those opportunities to, to reach out, to, to plant new churches, to reach some of these uh, remote villages where people aren't able to come uh, to, to Whittlesea. There's, you know, very little opportunity for many of the people to, to travel outside of their villages. And so uh, this is just one. There's others, but, but we're excited about what God is doing and who can tell. And, and, uh, and we'll hear, hopefully in just a moment, a little bit more about that and the progress that's being made uh, there. And so with that kind of as a little bit of context, a little bit of background about uh, South Africa and our partnership and what God is doing there, uh, hopefully we have uh, Pastor Cole Asili, uh to bring up uh, via video chat. There he is. Pastor, good to see you. Can you hear me? Good to see you, Pastor. Yes, I can hear you. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for those of you that don't okay. know, it, it's, about, uh, it's about six hours later there. So he's staying up uh, late past one in the morning to, uh, to be with us uh, and, uh, and share with us. And so we're so excited that you can uh, be a part of our service here tonight. He's actually, you're actually in Zambia right now, correct? Yes, I'm in yeah. Zambia. He's, uh, he's attending, uh, I think, a Bible conference there in Zambia, which is just to the north. Uh, and so I just wanted to, to ask you a few questions and just let you share with us uh, what God is doing and uh, how the, uh, just the partnership with our churches has, has been beneficial and how God's been working through, through that. And so Firstly, just uh, tell us a little bit about your family and how long you've been partnered with us here at Community Bible Church. Yes, um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm married to I'm, I'm married to Nolukolo. We've got children, three children. Then the eldest daughter is is 19 years old. She's in university, and the 13 year old girl she's also uh, she's in primary. She's staying with us in the house. And also we have the uh, little one who's one year, two months. She's still a baby. So yes, we are a family of four, if I may just say that. And then they were excited and we are serving the Lord here in our place in, in South Africa. Excellent. And so um, if you remember, how, how long have we been, have we been partnered with, with you and, and Community Bible Church? As far as I remember, I think uh, as I, um, we've been partnered around 11, maybe 13, 14 years, around those years, we've been like seeing the teams who comes uh, from, from your church to us here in South Africa. Even, even before I, I started to lead the church in the city, even in Tony, I used to interact with some of the guys who come from your church. So, but it, with us, Personal, I think it's, it's, it's like 11 years ago since we partnered with the Community Public Church. Excellent. So, uh, so hopefully you all are able to, to understand, but uh, he shared he's had, he has three daughters, one university all the way down to, uh, to a baby who's, I think, almost two maybe now. 
Um, and then uh, we've, been, we've been partnered with this area in South Africa, I think, for about 20 years, but about 12, 13 now with the church in, in Whittlesea that he's, he's been pastoring. Um, share with us, if you would, Pastor, just briefly how you came to Christ. Yes, I met with the Lord uh, when I was uh, 15 years old out in the rural areas of Eastern Cape, uh, deep, rural, deep rural areas. That's when I heard that there is a church in one of the houses in our community, which is then, it was when people were rioting against apartheid and everything. And there was this uh, church in the village. Uh, the person who was uh, preaching there was a white guy. He was from America. So the people were kind of like skeptical with the church. So, but at last I went. Even myself then, I was part of the people who were critical against the white men preaching to us because of the time we were in then. But uh, all of a sudden, when I was just coming closer to the house, the guy, the church, I, I mean, I just tend to be interested to hear what the, church, what the guy is going to say. As we started to preach, he was reading uh, at John 3, verse 16. And then I was listening to him. He was just sharing it in an amazing way. So I felt like this is it for me. I must embrace this, this church. I must accept what the guy is saying is true. Hmm. Although I was uh, not accepting him as a person, but the message caught me. So that's when I met the Lord and then uh, started to follow him since then. Amazing. And, and so to go to church after that, what did, how did you get there? To go to church after the church, I mean, after they started the, the church in, out in my village, the church, I think, after towards the end of the year, the church was kind of closed down, and there was no one in the village now who started to, I mean, who, who was helping us to gather so that we can hear the word and be taught and everything. But what happened is that I've um, started to walk uh, from my village to, to Thornhill. It's like uh, like three or four hours walk from where I was staying. So I will go to Tony on weekends in order for me to attend the church. After the church on Sunday, if the pastor will have something to support, to the money to give me so that I can be able to to catch a bus, I will I will be fortunate to have that. But if he doesn't have, then I will walk my way back home on Sunday so that I can start the school on, on the following day, which is Monday. So mm. that's how I started to, I mean, I grow to my faith through, through those uh, efforts that I uh, tried to put when I was uh, trying to follow the church, where the church was in Tony. Mm. I don't know if you guys caught that, but you had to walk three to four hours oftentimes to get to church, one way, <laughs> each direction. He's, uh, his hometown is called Pelindaba. And uh, I, uh, I like to mention that. I like to uh, share that with our teams because it actually translates to end of the world or end of the earth. And so I can often say, you know, I've, I've fulfilled uh, parts of Acts 1-8 and gone to the ends of the earth or as they say in Hosa Pelindava. Uh, and so he would walk from his village oftentimes uh, the, the three to four hours to, to the church so he, could, so he could be there and so he could learn. And, and, you know, I've seen in other parts of the world where people are so eager to hear the Bible taught, to, to learn about Jesus, and, and oftentimes in our culture, in our country, it's, it's the opposite. Uh, people will kind of come up with any excuse they can not to go to church. Uh, and so just, a, just a, a, an amazing testimony, and, uh, and just, a, you know, as God oftentimes brings people to genuine salvation, he then just gives them that desire. To, to learn, to grow, to be with God's people. And so, Pastor Colasili, we saw some pictures of the church in Whittlesea. How have you been able to use that, that, that building, that land, as a tool for ministry there in Extension 4? Yeah, that's great, Pastor Pedro. What's really happening is that the church is a blessing within the community. Mother is a blessing to the church. What's really happening is that... Uh, where we were in extension for, we were the first church to be erected within the community. And uh, the church is like a permanent, something like standing that will remind the people about God and also about the message that we are spreading within the village. 
So he's helping us in a way to testify to the people. More than that, is a meeting place because people in our community, the gospel is so, I can say it's so scarce because there are no many good churches within the area where they will, will preach the pure gospel of which we are really standing there, giving hope, I mean, bringing hope to the people with the word of the gospel. And then mm. other things that really, the, I mean, is the church is a blessing. Even the teams who comes and come along us and work with and partner with us within the area, it's also giving a, a strong testimony within the community. And if community will come to church at some point, maybe if they will need something, then we can be able to provide because the building is there, is one of the uh, things that we really use to reach out the, to the community. Mm. Yeah, it's really, it's been amazing for me to see just the, the light that the church is in the community. Uh, and then right there in the neighborhood, and oftentimes there's, uh, you know, just like here, there's, there's a lot of darkness. And so the church is, is really a, a light. And uh, I think one of, as I sometimes have walked around the neighborhood and uh, one of the things that I think is neat is that just since it's right there, even just the music is like an invitation. <laughs> you can hear it for a few blocks around the church uh, whenever there's a service or camp going on. And, uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, an invitation to the people to, to come and, and, and see what's going on and be a part of the worship that's going on. And it's been neat to see, you know, God build that, that building. And, all, you know, we, we all know that the church isn't a physical building, right? The church is, is God's people, and um, it looks like, uh, you know, where people have church looks different depending on where you are. And, you know, many parts of the world, uh, churches are, you know, primarily in homes or in, or in um, other, other places. I grew up in, uh, in France as a, as a son of a missionary church planter, and so we had church in our home whenever a church was planted at first, and then uh, when we would outgrow that, we'd just look for somewhere a little bit bigger, whatever that would be. Sometimes it was a conference room in a hotel or a storefront that was closed on Sunday or a school or whatever it was, and, and uh, ultimately, Lord willing, you know, eventually uh, end up with a, uh, a building where they could, they could uh, meet uh, each and every week, and so this is you know, it's so exciting that the, the Whittlesea Church has uh, this building and this ministry uh, right there in, in, in the neighborhood, as Colas Healy said, where there just, there just isn't another gospel witness. There isn't another, uh, certainly, church or ministry that's, that's preaching Christ. Uh, and so it's been, a, you know, it's been amazing to be able to, to have our camps there and to be able to, uh, to preach there and bring our teams there and seeing some of the some of the kids from our camps on on Sunday morning when we come and so it's uh it's just a it's just a, a neat ministry that, that God has been using um share a little bit about how uh the well has been able to be used for ministry and, and a help in that yeah well, yes back I think in 10 years uh, I mean uh, the thing 10 years uh, uh, since uh Five, six, seven years ago, we had a drought here in, 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 in we had a drought in Little in the surrounding area. So the work, the water scarcity was really a problem. People will struggle to get water. So when we started to have a, a well within the church property, the people will come and get the water from the from the church because there was a source of water within the church. So the well was really a a tool. To help people out at the very same time, There's, it was also exposing them to the church, also to us as people who are who, are, who would like to reach out to them. And within mm -hmm. the community, uh, I'm the one of the people who, who are being recognized uh, because of those uh, help. I've been recognized that they know that is a pastor who is preaching the gospel in that church, and the church is also providing the people with some water whenever they need comes. So really, the church, the well was a blessing, a real blessing within the community of Extension 4. Mm, that's neat to hear. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's amazing how, again, we, we just take that for granted, don't we? Um, but just being able to, to have that water and, and, again, another reason for, for people just to kind of be on, on, the, on the property at the church and um, just get something as simple as a jug full of water. 
Uh, and, and it's an opportunity to, to talk to someone, to meet someone, to have a spiritual conversation with someone, to invite someone to church, right? Um, and so uh, it's neat to, to hear about how God is using that. I'm excited to see that when I come uh, just uh, a little less than a month. Um, share with us, if you would, Pastor, um, what, uh, what progress and growth have you seen uh, in, in the church there in, in Whittlesey? Uh-oh. Couple who are leading the church, but now we have four of us who are leading the church. We've got elders, we've got young men who grew up within the church and then even uh, assume the leadership position, like in terms of leading with us, uh, the, uh, leading us the church. Even now, while I'm here in Zambia, there's someone who's taking care of, uh, care of the church. I, I'm, I don't like, uh, I don't feel like there's a vacuum. So it's really, that's also a really a, one of the shoots that we, we, we recognize this is a, a growth, a practical growth within the church. And we find like every Sunday, people will come visit, visiting us and people are always wanted to come to our church. Whenever we meet someone, will say to us, we'll visit your church at some point, because your church will see it, we we'll see the church, what it stands for. Uh, the growth is really amazing. Hmm. Uh, now I'm far away. I'm here uh, to seek help within us. I'm, I'm not there, but the guy is taking him through. I don't know whether you know said to He's taking him through the word of God. Said to he's helping the guy. He's been updating me every day. The progress the guy is is real. Hey. Uh, you're breaking up a little bit. True, because when it... yes. <laughs> All right. Well, some of the things that I, I think I heard and and that I know, and so I'll just maybe re reiterate some of that. But there's they've seen so many encouraging things: uh, children's ministry, Sunday schools. Uh, children's choir, youth ministry. Uh, they have, uh, uh, you know, a board of elders now, and which is which is just so exciting. Oftentimes, one of the difficulties, uh, you know, this 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 isn't just in in Africa or South Africa, but um, is finding men who will lead, who are willing to to take that step and and follow Christ and lead. Many of the churches uh, in this part of the world are are a high percentage of women at the church. And so, and so even just having uh, uh, some men who are willing to, to, to lead and to be a part of, of uh, guiding and, and making the decisions for the church is, is just an exciting thing. And so it's been neat to see that uh, develop and, and, uh, and see God using um, the teaching of the Word, right, uh, that, that's, that's happening there on, on uh, several, oftentimes several times a week. Uh, to, to, to grow and, and continue to, to, to build the church there. Um, share, with, share with us, if you will, what are some challenges that you face uh, in ministry in South Africa and, and maybe even in Whittlesea? Yeah, the challenge that we face in South Africa is really unique. Uh, I, I mean, according to the situation that we're in, we are part of the society where the ancestral worship, worship is so big. Hmm. Uh, we have a spiritual need, we have a physical need. You find people, they come to church sometimes. It's difficult for them to commit to the church because the family, their families are so, are, so, are, so, are, so, are, so, are so hard on them. They are struggling now to commit sometimes. It's one of the challenges that we always face. Even those who would love to join the church uh, f uh, fully, but there's always that fear that they will suffer rejection. It's one of the challenges uh, that we're always uh, facing, knowing that it won't go away easily because it's part of the commission that we have as a church. People won't like us because we are following Jesus Christ. So it's one of the things that we are really facing. The other need that we have is that uh, that's, a, that's a, also a prayer that if we can have more people who can be volunteering to help us 
in different part of ministries, the people mm. who will be helping uh, helping us with youth, the people who will be helping us with uh, children ministry, was one of the ministries that are growing. Since the team were here, we always see children being sent by the parents to church, even though the parents, they are not coming, but they are sending their children in numbers to the church. So that's also another, that's one of the things that we love us, we love you to pray. We, that's, that's, one, that's one of the things that we are, uh, really challenge uh, about to get the people who are committed to help and work with us full time in mm. strengthening the work within mm. the area that's that's one of the i mean that's it if i i mean yes yeah some some pretty big challenges um i don't know if you you heard but they you know the the traditional belief system and and, and worship uh, is is of ancestors in south africa and so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of rituals and things that go along with that. Uh, it's it's a really, really interesting place. A lot of times if you ask someone uh, in Whittlesea in South Africa, are you Christian? Oftentimes they'll say, they'll say yes. Uh, but then oftentimes, you know, if you follow that up with a few more questions or a conversation, they, they, you know, they won't be able to really explain exactly what that even means. Uh, it's, it's, it's more just a, of a name. And so what you see a lot is people who who would say, yes, I'm a Christian, but they also want to continue in their traditional uh, rituals and, and ancestor worship and prayer and, and, and kind of just maybe mix those together somehow. And so a big part of the ministry that Pastor Colasili does is really try to, you know, to call them out of that fully and follow Jesus completely uh, and, and, and leave behind the, you know, these, these traditions and, and rituals and things that, that we know um, are not of God, and and fix their fix their eyes upon Christ, and and so it's, it is it is a challenge because it does, as I mentioned earlier, it does come sometimes with some uh, some rejection in the community. Uh, if you don't go through the rituals, then people will often look down on you or or push you away or 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 whatever. And so it's uh it is very difficult and uh, and and finding people to serve, as he mentioned as well, not just a problem in. Uh, in South Africa, but I think in churches all over the world, right? He's got so many children that, that will come, parents who will send their children to church, but won't come themselves. And, uh, and so the, you know, the people that he does have serving uh, and, and who are amazing and, and working hard, but you, know, you, need, you need people, more people who are going to be willing to, to step up and help and, and serve and teach and do all the different things that, that, that's a part of uh, the ministries that they have there, and so it is, uh, it is a challenge, and it is uh, something uh, that we can pray for uh, for them as well. Um, share with us a little bit. I talked a little bit earlier about who can tell and and the, the the church plant there, but share with us a little bit about how the Whittlesea has been reaching the surrounding villages. Yeah, like on Thursday, we have uh, we call it uh, a reach out day. We will go and share the gospel, it whatever means, visiting our brothers. In that, uh, in that sense, we want to reach out to their families and to their extended families. Whereas in South Africa, you'll find people, they are still connected to each other because of the economic situation. Some of them will help each other. And then through, 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 to, through the visit that we do on Thursday, we are reaching out to many people and we are sharing the gospel with them some of them they they show up to, uh, at the church uh, at the, uh, on Sunday in our church. Some of them are still maybe uh, struggling to to process and accept the 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 the, the, the message of the uh, of the gospel. So we are really reaching out and even extending that to other parts of the surrounding areas. Whenever you go, um, you will find like uh, as you go, you see someone. You talk with someone, and he will invite him to. He will invite, he, he invite us to come to their home or something. Mm. That's when we go and pray with them. Because in, in South Africa, the struggles is real. When people need help, need some uh, spiritual support, or you need to go and and share the, the word of God with them. That's why that's how we reach out to the uh, 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 village of Ukentel and surrounding area. So there are some efforts that really are there that we've been like doing in a regular basis 
in, in, in reaching out the area and the surrounding areas. And so, I mean, man, something we can, we can all do, right? Just look for the people that God puts in our path and, and look for those opportunities just to, to share with them, to invite them. I, I don't think, I don't know if, if I've ever been anywhere with you, Pastor Koasili, in the, in the surrounding areas where you haven't met somebody that, that you know. <laughs> and that you had a little a quick conversation with and uh and maybe yes. <laughs> and so it's it's just it's you know the people there are are are, are so friendly and, and what you know what that does is it just opens up an opportunity uh to have uh you know sometimes it's a quick conversation but just to uh, just to maybe share briefly or, or invite them to church or you know and or let them know or ask them where they're from and let them know hey we you know, we have a, a church that's meeting there now in, in this village where, you, you know, you said you're from, and we'd love to, we'd love to have you come, come visit. Uh, and so, sh- how's the progress on the church building, and who can tell? Yo, Pastor Drew, we're, really, we are, we're, we are progressing well. But in the last three days, there was a um, kind of... Uh, uh, is something that just nearly closed down the, 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 that, that, that church, that church, pro, that building project. Mm. But the community there started to come. Was now we're already on the window level. Okay. Then they started to come asking how to get the property, and there was lots of uh, <laughs> argument and stuff. And we were so we we're praying that wow, what's really happening now? But last Monday they had a meeting, the community meeting, and George attended attended the meeting. And in the meeting they said there's no reason for us, for them to stop the church of progressing with the building, uh, the, the structure. So they said the church must progress and everything. They sorted out themselves what mm. was the um, the conflict or differences amongst them. It was not. It was nothing to do with us, but it was something to do with the community. But uh, praise God, we've just crossed that line, and we have just started. Yesterday, I was getting a report from George that they, they are continuing finishing the building. I think by when I when I go back home, um, on maybe next week, we'll start with the roofing. We'll start check, checking whether we can be able to start roofing that uh, structure. Wow. Well, so there is that there's a project pro- progress who, who like <laughs> really we appreciate your help in that part of our of our work well that's so exciting i know i know the the project in the church building project in Whittlesey's face lots of opposition. I know, and who can tell there's going to be some opposition because whenever God is, is at work in building his church, there, there's always going to be opposition. But I'm glad that it sounds like uh, it's moving forward. I'm excited to, uh, to see it next month and uh, be able to be there and, uh, and, and share the gospel, hopefully, with, the, with whoever wants to come, the children and whoever else, uh, as, we do, as we do our camps, and, and who can tell. Um, with that said, uh, share with us what are some specific things that we can pray for uh, for you, uh, for the church. Uh, just what are some things that we can we can lift up in prayer? And I know uh, we have people here who I saw them nod. They told me they were all going to pray for South Africa. So I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so let let us know what yeah, can we pray um, for. Yeah, the prayer that we have. I mean, I would love you to pray for us. The prayer requests. It's, I already mentioned that uh, we really pray for our young people to find a, a, a strong uh, ministry or a firm ministry where mm-hmm. our young people can be able to be to be really to be really be to be really equipped with the word and everything, and even amongst them, who can really ex- expand the knowledge uh, that I mean, knowledge about mm-hmm. God and other, and other stuff. This is our real prayer because where we are, there are no good uh, seminary school or something. Even that's why I'm here in Zambia because I'm trying to acquire, acquire more knowledge of how to handle the word of God in a 
in a in a I mean in a in a way that is uh, is, is 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 not gonna distort it. So really, we need we need prayer in that part. We need our, your prayers in that part, and also. George and his wife, they are helpful. They are, they are really working hard. I appreciate him. He's always reaching out every now and then. I mean, three, three days a week, he is always doing something for the church. Hmm. And he's reporting everything and he's doing well. If we can really get a, a, some form of support for, for him, that can be a great thing. Because he's doing well there. And the other thing is that is the soup kitchen. We started a soup kitchen. You know, when we are here, we dish out some some bread and yes. soup to the children. The, our prayer, if we can have people, people are so because in South Africa the unemployment and the other thing that's stressing people. We always fail to get a, a volunteer, somebody who's going to take that ministry because I can't do everything. It's a person who can just take that ministry and, and work with us so that the ministry can be there and the children whenever they want to get some, or whenever they want to go out and dish out the soup uh, to the children, we can be able to do that. Not only the children, even the el elder, because there are those who are stressed, who are being um, the elders, who are the, el the elder people who are, who are deserted by their families. Uh, in a, in a, every now and again, I will invite one of the old men who just stays next to the church, he's part of our church. I'll invite him to come and make and make him a cup of, of, of coffee so that he can feel that there is somebody who's, who will love him or who can be who can be there for him whenever he, 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 he needs. The other thing is that there is the drug drug problem. Our young people in South Africa now in numbers, they are in drugs. Hmm. You will see them that really they are in page in page in so this is really one of the things that we are praying for. If you can have uh, some sort of um, maybe a minister that will be will catered for the edits. As we started with this young man, that's one of the things that we love you to pray for. Thank you. I think that's it at the moment. <laughs> in sight. Uh, well, thank you so much uh, for being with us, for staying up late to be with us. Appreciate that. And uh, just so thankful that we were able to, uh, to chat with you and hear about what God is doing over there. Uh, just, uh, just to um, expand on one of those prayer requests, he mentioned young people. He mentioned some of the the issues that they face, which uh, which are not uncommon here either. Uh, but uh, but it is a it is a big problem over there. And and sometimes the the little money that people can come up with, uh, they'll spend on alcohol or drugs. Uh, and so it's uh, it you know it's it's an issue. It obviously. Um, is uh you know is addicting and dangerous and and uh it's you know it's something that you know the church is trying to reach these young people and trying to free them from some of these some of these things that they're in bondage to and uh and so it is a it is an important ministry and it's it's you know it's a, it's a challenge as well uh is really you know the church is sometimes feels like they're they're competing against the you know the bar downtown or whatever uh, and so be in prayer for that, be in prayer for the, the, the ministry and the, uh, the children. He mentioned the, uh, the soup kitchen or the, the meal services that they have. And uh, just, again, an opportunity to, to share a lot of kids. But he mentioned, you know, hopefully also reaching the parents uh, and what that looks like. Maybe, uh, maybe having a, a coffee time or something along those lines and, and getting some of the parents to come as well and be able to just... Uh, to, to speak to them and share with them as well. And, and then, as you mentioned earlier, for, for some more people in the church to step up and serve uh, and to, to build into the, to the lives of the people in the community, the children who are coming, uh, oftentimes, you know, uh, hundred plus. Uh, and, uh, and so it's, uh, it's, an important, it's an important ministry. Um, so I wanna, I wanna go ahead and uh, just, just pray for some of those requests. Uh, and then, uh, and then some of the team members from other our short, from some of our other short-term mission teams will be uh, will be coming up and praying for those trips. Uh, and so, uh, I would appreciate again if you keep those on your hearts and your minds as uh, as we as a church are sending people uh, to all different areas, all different places, different cultures, different different languages uh, to to hopefully uh, reach people for Jesus. Let's pray. 
Uh, Father God, we do thank you so much for the, the ministry in South Africa. We thank you for the faithfulness of Pastor Kola Seely and his wife, Nola Kola. We thank you for their three beautiful daughters. And uh, we thank you for the church that you are building there. Uh, we thank you for uh, the, the church uh, land and the building and, and the well. And uh, we just th- pray that each and every one of those would be used uh, to strategically uh, to draw people not just to, to, the, to the property, but to Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you for their heart to reach the people of the community, young and old. Uh, we pray, God, that you would continue to free people from the bonds of ancestor worship, of, of alcohol, drugs, and uh, all, all, the, all the different things that, that they face, and that they, would, uh, that they would be freed through the gospel, uh, through the power of Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you for the church plants and uh, the surrounding villages. We pray for Thornhill, Tendergate, Who Can Tell, McBride. Uh, we know, the God, that, that there are others in other places where uh, they're trying to reach the people of those communities. And so we pray for the building and who can tell. We pray, God, that, uh, that you would continue to give them favor. Uh, we uh, just heard of a shutdown and, and then a meeting that was able to start the work back up on the building. We just pray, God, that that would be able to continue and that it would be uh, completed and that the, this new building in, in who can tell would be a light in that community and that people, many people would come there and find Jesus. Uh, we thank you, God, for... Uh, for the ability to, to go there and to serve alongside uh, Pastor Cole Asili and the other leaders of the church. Uh, we're just so grateful, again, that you uh, choose to, to work in and through us to accomplish your purposes. Uh, we pray in Widow Sea specifically, God, that you would raise up more leaders who will serve, who, are, who will help teach the Sunday schools and lead the children's choir and, and, and uh, teach and, and do the things that need to be done, serve, serve the soup, whatever it is, God, that, that you would raise up those people who are willing not just to come, but to, uh, but to plug in and to serve. Uh, we thank you, God, for uh, just the opportunity to speak to Colosili tonight. I pray that you would continue to encourage him and continue to work through him powerfully and that, uh, and that he would uh, see uh, the fruit of his labor as people find